Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Explore the Spectrum. I'm your host, Janetta Bryant, and we are joined with Scott Gardner. How are you doing today, Scott? Excellent. How are you today? I'm doing really well, thank you. I'm excited to chat with you. You've got a lot going on up there in Indiana, and I'd love for you to tell us a little bit about your program. Tell us, how did you get into this, and what are you currently working on? I got into autism because I have two um, young sons with the condition. Uh, my eldest is um, more along the lines of what we used to call Asperger's now in the DSM-5. It's all classified under ASD. My youngest son is uh, nonverbal, um, so it takes a little, little more time, a little more um, – little more um you know patience and whatnot but uh, i was able to uh start off volunteering with uh, local organizations in indiana as well as other organizations across the country um and then i pursued my degree in psychology um graduating in uh, 2005 with my um, doctorate in uh, psychology which helped immensely with my kids' condition as well as my practice, um, helping other families advocate and um, so on and so forth. Being and so when you say advocate, educate them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. When you say advocate, what are some of the things that you're working towards? You're trying to help parents um, understand the process mm -hmm. and then you're advocating. So what what is your goal? Okay, when I say advocate, a lot of times um, parents don't understand a lot of their kids' rights. So as an advocate, as an advocate, I go into the school systems a lot of times. There's a thing called Article 7, and most of it's written by lawyers with uh, the here is, whereas, therefore. A lot of parents don't know the legal ease to it as to where I have the understanding, and I – go into the IEPs, the uh, individual educational programs, and I sit down with the special needs director or the superintendent over special needs, and I advocate for the, um, the child, and I give the parents their options that, you know, you're not, you have rights, you, you know, you, you um, can make decisions. You can request things to be implanted, implanted into the IEP. And um, if the school do, disagrees, whatnot, you can go on to due process, arbitration. I explain their rights basically so that they're not alone. They know that they've got somebody, you know, that uh, understands the legal aspects to uh, the um, the IEP in the educational process. Yeah, you know, I think that in often cases, when a parent has a new diagnosis, there's a sea of acronyms that they're very quickly having to learn, and an IEP is one of them. And then they go into the school and they sit down, and it is a, it's a humbling moment when you're sitting there as a parent, and you've got as many as eight or nine different professionals surrounding you, all with the intention of wanting to support your child, or at least that's why they're supposed to be there, right? But in that moment, Correct. they're going to tell you every one of your child's deficits in order to try to correct them, but it's almost like death of a thousand paper cuts. And you aren't human if it doesn't impact you some. And it does impact you emotionally. It um, it stings because you're championing, you're championing mm -hmm. for your child. But the reality is, is in that moment, you might get caught off guard with some of the emotion that's going on and to not know all of the things that are due to you and your child. An advocate is a wonderful person to have alongside of you to say, wait a minute, you don't have to do that. And it could be because you're not savvy enough just yet. You haven't been around the block enough times in these IEP meetings to know what to ask for, or it could be because you're Correct. caught off guard emotionally. But having somebody that knows all of the rules and knows what rights your child has is something that's really valuable. I applaud you for doing that with your families. Um, what are some of the different success stories that you've been able to see unfold because of a properly written educational plan? Well, we're, we're able to give um, children, special needs kids, more time on testing. We're able to have the um, teachers 
actually read and explain the questions so that they have the cognitive ability and the understanding what the question is so they can give the uh, the answer um, as to where they may they may not have the um, aptitude or the ability to understand in the uh, test format we can have extended test times we can have the questions read and we can also have one-on-one -on -one, sometimes paraprofessionals sit down with them to help the the, the, the child or you know um, help explain them you know what the question that they're asking in the test in the format sometimes they might have to reword the question for the uh the child to understand the grasp the concept the concept before they can um get the uh the ability to understand it to give the answer correctly well, I can appreciate that. And it is important that our kids have those support mechanisms in place in order for them to be their best, not only in life, but in the classroom and to be able to shine academically. Um, so if someone is listening and they're in Indiana, I'm imagining that you're geographically bound somewhat to Indiana or near there. <laughs> but if it's beyond that, correct me by all means. Okay, yep. so if somebody's in Indiana and they want to learn more, they want to partner with you or they want to get a hold of you, how would they do that? They can go to the IndianaAutismAlliance.org website and um, there is an immense amount of resources. They can click on pages that can take them to ADA providers, that can take them to speech therapists, all kinds of information. There's a platitude of information that uh, we have listed there. We have a very good um, webmaster that keeps that up daily. You know, they take down the old events and they put up the current things. I'm very happy with the Hayes Group that they, they do an immense job on our site and we're very proud to partner with them. Yeah, I'm, I mean, a good website with a platitude of different resources is always a good thing to know about. So definitely if you're interested in learning more about what Scott does and learning more about how to reach out to him, utilize the website that's mentioned. And for all of you that are joining us, I appreciate your time and learning a little bit more about how we continue to explore the possibilities.